Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today at the farm, we had the great blessing of hosting a little day of reflection for the teachers and staff at St. Benedict's School at St. John's Parish. And providentially, it happens to fall on this day that is the memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas was declared by Pope Leo XIII to be the patron of Catholic schools. Okay, so certainly St. Thomas is interceding for these members of the school and winning for them the graces they need to fulfill their duties. St. Thomas was born the year before the death of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis died in the year 1226, and St. Thomas was born in 1225. It's always interesting to think about who the other saints were at the time and where they may have been and who might have met who. At the same time, St. Anthony of Padua was a very popular preacher working miracles throughout Italy. He would then die in, I think it was the year 1236. And also St. Dominic, I believe, was still alive at the time of the birth, anyway, of St. Thomas Aquinas. So St. Thomas, born in 1225, would later die in the year 1274. He received his education from the monks on Monte Cassino. In fact, he was born in Rocasecca, which is a town just north of Monte Cassino. He also studied at the University of Naples. He was a student of St. Albert the Great, another doctor of the church, and he eventually would join the Dominican order in 1244. He's considered to be one of the greatest philosophers and theologians of all time and is known as the common doctor, that is the doctor for everybody, and also the angelic doctor because a particular scene in his life where Some, I think it might have been his family members who wanted to dissuade him from his vocation, uh, locked him up and sent in a prostitute to tempt him to sin and abandon his vocation, his religious vocation, which would have required celibacy, of course. So St. Thomas drove off the harlot, I believe, with a torch, and then angels appeared to him, girding him with a sash, symbolic of the gift of purity and chastity uh, that he would maintain the rest of his life. And in fact, today the Dominicans, including the Dominicans down at St. Paul's Church, promote this, um, I think it's called uh, angelic warfare or something like that, for the virtue of chastity, to promote the virtue of chastity, especially among the youth. So St. Thomas, uh, his greatest work, definitely the the best known, the Summa Theologica, which was meant for beginners in theology, just to cover the fundamentals, and he never actually finished it. And that's interesting to think about the divine providence at work there. It's almost as if God said, Thomas, you have spoken well of me, now that's enough. St. Thomas himself, he had a heavenly vision at a certain point, and after having seen that vision, he said to himself, everything which I have written is so much straw, and he wanted to throw his works into the fire. Now, fortunately for us, he was prevented from doing so, but that in itself is a great teaching moment for us. If this greatest doctor of the church after having had a vision of God, said that everything that he wrote was so much straw, it just confirms for us that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the mind of man what God has prepared for those who love him. It's these type of thoughts and these type of meditations which should spur us on to be generous with God in serving him and loving him with all of our strength. This comes to mind as well in today's first reading from the Hebrews, from the letter to the Hebrews. 
Do we consider ourselves strangers and aliens on earth? Are we seeking a homeland? Because God, our Father, is preparing for us, as our Lord said, I go to prepare you a dwelling. For Abraham was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and maker is God. This is our heavenly homeland that is awaiting us. We are merely sojourners, wayfarers, passing through this world. So let's not set our hearts on the things of this world, but let's set our hearts on heaven and live wisely, as St. Thomas would want us to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.